Lone Star Halo brought to you in part by Noble L Works just outside of Anaheim Stadium and the Pond or the Honda Center where you can get drink specials just by mentioning Halos in the infield. Also brought to you in part by 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets. 714 Tickets is a place to go to get 10% off of any ticket purchase just by also mentioning H-I-T-I, Halos in the infield. Now enjoy the show. Live every night on the Halos in the Infield Baseball Network. Welcome to the Halos in the Infield postgame podcast with Todd Fox, sponsored by Noble Ale Works Brewery, as well as 714 Tickets. This is your nightly destination for all things Los Angeles Angels. Come join Todd as he recaps every thrilling and disappointing moment from tonight's game, win or lose. Get ready for insightful analysis, fan reactions, and Todd's engaging commentary. Hey, 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 Plus, hey. fans can call in live to the Halo Hotline to have their voices and opinions heard as well. It's the Halo Hotline. Stay tuned in for your chance to win free Halos merchandise with our weekly trivia. It's, it's time to dive into the heart of Angels baseball with Todd Fox on the Halos in the infield postgame podcast. There's a drive from Mike Trout. See you later. That is long gone. It's the Todd Fox postgame podcast with your host, Todd Fox. Hey, 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 welcome into Halos in the Infield, Todd Fox Post Game Show. We are coming to you live on various little destinations. So wherever you may be on this Sunday afternoon, hope all is well on this, uh, I guess, uh, holy day for some out there. The Angels get a W. It's a holy day for us. Is <laughs> Not to be sacrilegious or nothing, I apologize in advance or afterwards, but the Angels win. Angels win 4-1. to one. Good game by, again, once Jet, one Jets pod ch- uh, chimes in with, Good game by uh, Reed, and Reed showed you why a lot of us, not myself, because I am i wasn't really sure of any kind of pitcher being the number one guy going into the season uh, because I felt like we had a bunch of three and fours or four and fives, but I was definitely out there saying, hey, you know what, <clears throat> I hope the Angels can get a good pitching for performance at some point. But the Angels, and they got one here and escaped the freaking sweep. That's the most important thing right there. And happy Easter to everybody out there right now. Fernando chiming in. Thank you very much. Also one jet spot. But the Angels get a very important win today, and they get off the schneid. There's a few teams that are surprisingly 0 for coming out the gate. Uh, The last two games you would have expected, okay, you know, the Angels didn't get off the schneid or, or wouldn't seem to get off the schneid because they played so horribly. And we thought that the you know a lot of Angel fans were were like, hey, you know we're gonna get, we're gonna get swept. And I thought maybe the same thing, but credit to the Angels. We'll talk. We'll get down how this game wound up the way it was, which it was getting the Angels a victory. And then we'll talk more about uh, what what we expect for them going into Miami. We'll take a look maybe at the pitching matchups uh, moving forward. Actually, let me type that in right now. Uh, what is it uh, to see if I can get that for a little bit later? But as far as today's uh, games uh, moving forward here. Uh, <laughs> this this uh, this game was was very very exciting in the first couple innings because the Angels did something they hadn't done in the first couple games, which was get hits. And I know Taylor Ward went deep and got the two run homer, his second of the season. That was all well and nice and good off a good pitcher like Tyler Wells. Tyler Wells is not a, a cheap pitcher. Again, the Orioles have a stacked staff. They have a stacked bullpen. They're a very very good team. But the Angels did really good getting off to a hot start in that first inning and getting the two-run home run. And then they were able to get a Neto single after a, a Renifo single. Ohapi uh, got on base and then all of a, you know, with a nice hit. So you had back-to-back-to-back hits right there or three hits out of four at batters. And you were able to generate a run to make it 3-0. Then uh came home on a throwing air when the, they had second and third and threw down to third base to try to pick off Neto. And the ball went into the uh, left field, and he came down. And, or no, Ohapi. Ohapi was at third. And he missed the throw, went into the outfield. They got the fourth run, and there you go. And then as an Angel fan right there, you're, you're believing the hype. You're like, hey, you know what? That meeting worked yesterday. They had a good meeting with Ron Washington, and Ron Washington was able to come out there and, you know, uh, whether he yelled or screamed, I heard a little of both. I heard it was like a little mild talk, and then I heard it was a yelling match. So we don't know. We don't have the greatest reporters. But 
the thing was, whatever he said, it kind of worked for the first couple innings because although you didn't really, I mean, although Reed gave up the run in the bottom of the second inning, that was Baltimore's best chance, really, to get a shot at the Angels right there. They left the bases loaded, could have gotten, you know, tied the game, could have got the, the, you know, a couple more runs. But Reed gave you a semi shut down inning and that's what you needed and that's what we've been clamming for all this time last season the season before every time the angels would put up a crooked number the other team would respond right back because whatever the pitcher didn't take that same i've got a you know beast moded out there i gotta take this really tough uh look upon things and get go dig a little deeper and get that shut down inning don't allow the momentum to shift back to the other team we've always complained about that and read I'm not going to come out here and call him the ace. I need to see more from him, more consistency, because there's really no consistency in this rotation as we know of it consistently now, the last couple of years. But if Reed can give you performances like this where, okay, you know, the team is struggling to score runs. If they give you some, don't give it back. Work your damnedest. Because so many times we've seen Reed, Sandoval, Silseth, you name them, even Tyler Anderson at times come out and have to pitch almost perfect and you're still losing because you give me a performance like canning did the other day i know the other two runs came on him were charged from the luis garcia but he literally gave you three runs in five innings and sort of the same kind of performance today a little less dominating than detmers because detmers was in the strike zone he was striking out guys with filthy sliders filthy curveballs and a nice little change up mix in with a fastball that set all that up he had a really good i mean how hoppy called a great game yeah so he had great stuff today canning wasn't that bad yesterday and three runs is not a lot to ask your offense to get but in the first two games they went silent for so long, had so many zeros left up on the board before they did anything late in the game when it didn't give a ma- when it didn't give a fuck. But in this game, they got the runs early and then shut down. <laughs> Tyler Wells settled in after allowing those other two runs, and he pitched like an ace through the rest of his spot. Then you had, you know, the Angels just one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, uh, striking out again. We know Baltimore's pitching's good. We know their bullpen's good but you still have to generate something. And they only had a guy at first base, which I believe was Neto on a walk. He was then thrown out on a perfectly called pickoff. And then they, they had another hit later on, and that was about it. But there's a couple of awards I could give out today. I could give it out to multiple guys. I could give it out to Reed Detmers, which we'll see if he gets it. I could give it out to Soriano because Soriano, I mean, look, here's the thing with Ron Washington. We have to see where this goes. It was only game one of his strategy with Soriano but Soriano he said we're not going to stretch him out as a starter which was assumed by all of us assumed by the 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 media they're going to use him in a long relief in that bullpen to strengthen that bullpen and to a point I mean it's good if you if he can give you two innings you can like you know me I don't like this whole Nevin bull crap where they were like hey one game on one game off uh you know you pitch one inning I don't care if you pitched a third of an inning you can't go tomorrow that is stupid shit but if you're pitching one inning and or inning and a half to two innings, go tomorrow. What, what's wrong with your arm? That You're a bullpen guy. That's what you're used to. But if you're pitching Soriano three or more and you're pitching him 50 pitches or more, you absolutely can't pitch him another night after pitching 50 pitches. I don't know what I, I, I think. Let me see if I can see his pitch total for this one. Soriano threw 34 today which is an equivalent to two innings, if you think about it, 17 and 17, which borderline, if they really needed him tomorrow, I would use him for an inning. Would I use him multiple innings tomorrow? No. But if we had an eighth inning situation, by all means, I'd use him and be tentative. If he if he got into trouble, faced more than five batters, then I would go to the bullpen. But I wouldn't use him more than five batters tomorrow. Um so I wouldn't use a multiple, but but that's what Ron wants to give you. So if there's a game where a starter gives you a nice little five to six innings and they need you to go, they need to get to that Estevez closer spot, this is this may be the recipe. And especially if you're trying to break a losing streak, Ron actually, if you think about it, pitched him like they, this was a playoff game. Like they, they needed to get this victory. He did not want to leave Baltimore winless. And in his, I guess, whatever quotes they got in the beginning of the show, they brought up the fact that, hey, uh, Ron talked about there's one thing. Hey, there's a lot of baseball left to be played. He he mimicked Roger Lodge. 
And he said, this is two of 162, but two terrible games out of 162. And things have got to change for game three. So the message was received for the first two innings on the hitting side. <laughs> I think the message was received pitching through the whole nine innings. Because even Carlos Estevez came out in the ninth inning and pitched a clean ninth inning. And it was a really nice ninth inning. And it was like, bang, 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 good night. And that, and that's, to me, look, this is an impressive win. When you can hold a lineup that stacked to one run on three hits, you've done your job. I really like what what, what they did today. I thought that they did a, a, an amazing job uh, pitching. So uh, I really like the, 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 uh, what, what they got from their pitching as a staff. I just felt that the hitting, they left too much out there. Again, another game we're looking at where I'm looking at the box score right now, seven innings of zeros, seven innings of zeros. You can't have that. And I look, I can tolerate as a fan, and I'm sure the coaches would say the same thing, seven innings of, of zeros, but you're putting pressure on. You're getting guys on maybe five, four to five guys are hitting in that inning instead of having three up, three down, three up, three down, three up, three down. That's not good. You're giving there's multiple chances for the opponent to get back into the game. So with that being said, that'd be my only negative taken out of this game is again, the angels got some runs, but then went stagnant for the rest of the game. They cannot do that. That, that has to change for this team to be anywhere close to 500 this year, to be anywhere close to be competitive in these series against good baseball teams. You got to keep the pressure up. So that's the frustrating thing I'll take out of the game because again, the angels only mustered four runs on six hits, but the most of that damage again was done in the first two innings. So uh, other than that, I mean, you can't fall. I mean, look, nine innings of baseball pitched by Detmir Soriano and Estevez combined. They threw a, a, a complete total of about 124 pitches and got the W against, a, again, a very, very good lineup. Uh, let's see. We we had a few 0 for fours. We had a uh, you know there wasn't much damage done by the Angels, but you again you had uh, Drury with a hit late. That was the first hit since the second inning. Again, it took him seven innings to get a hit. Uh, but Taylor Ward's two run homer was the difference in this game. Sean Will extended his streak, so he's now 19 away. No, he's 18 away from the record. So that's pretty awesome right there. Hopefully he can keep that up as far as the on base. Uh, for a rookie, uh, the rookie record, I think, is 48 or 49. So he's either 18 or 19 games off of that record. So hopefully that streak can continue. And uh, let's get into some, uh, some uh, what do you call it, awards before we get into the um, comments here. We'll, we'll start reading these comments and see what you guys thought and gals thought about this game today. So first, the Golden Stamos, for those who don't know, for the best performance on the field. And uh, let's cue up our uh, John Stamos because he's the sexiest guy out there. What do you think about uh, John Stamos uh, there, Roger? Uh, uh, do, do you do you like do you like him or uh, you know is is he one of your favorites or or does the season start tomorrow since we won? Is it? I I, I don't know. You, you let me know. If you're a so-called angel fan, if you're a halo honk for life like me, then shut up. Oh, damn. So Halo honks are not allowed. What about this? Pretty cocky. I want balls and balls and John Stamos. Okay, you're going to get your John Stamos. Relax. Before, you know, uh, the first five innings, who was going to be the star of the game if the Angels would have held on to the game? It was Reed Detmers. So the John Stamos Award goes to Reed Detmers. But it wasn't easy because after seeing what Soriano did, those three innings pitching up to 101 miles per hour, looking absolutely dominant, other, you know, all, you know, take away that air at first base that he had. I mean, he looked unhittable right there, and that's what you want to see from him, and I don't think you can get that from him as a starter. So the position they got him in right now, I'm hesitant to see how it's going to work multiple innings, but in that seventh, eighth inning role, and hell, even if uh, if, if Stevis struggles at times as a closer, use him as a closer. That's closer stuff, and he was absolutely dominant tonight, but I will still stick with Reed Detmers because that pitch – some of those pitches were falling off a table. I know it's one of a, a cheesy little line there, but they were falling off a table. The, the the hitters looked terrible. They had a couple like Rouchman went to one knee on one of the sliders. 
great pitching tonight tonight uh, today sorry i'm used to night games but again reed detmere's five innings pitch one run two hits allowed seven strikeouts through five the pitch count was a little high because he did go full on multiple batters but he was able to battle through it for the most part so hell of a job for him to get that number one start now let's go over to one of the awards we don't like giving to our home team but uh, we have to give it out it's the nacho night for for our nacho award for nacho night nacho night you are the worst player on the baseball field. Let's see who it goes to. I love the nachos. Gas station nachos. I love the nachos. Yeah. Gas station nachos. Ow. Ow. The award goes to everybody's favorite hard worker on this baseball team. When you think of hard workers, when you think of dedication, when you think of the love of the game, Love of baseball in general. Some guy that will just sign autographs all day, all night. He's the first one in the stadium, the last one to leave. Yes, you you think it when I'm thinking Anthony Rendon. Yes, unfortunately, we give him the Nacho night. And, of course, I'm sarcastic because he's a piece of shit. He's up there with Artie Moreno. If Artie Moreno wasn't the owner of the team, Anthony Rendon would be number one hated uh, person for, as wearing the angel uniform. He's a close number two, but he is number two. Anthony Rendon sucking the life out of anything that we do as a baseball team and on the field as he was the leadoff experiment continues, and he went 0 for 12 in the series, did not get on base once. The best thing he did was earlier in the game when they had runners at first and second. He had a deep fly ball to sacrifice both uh, Ohapi and I believe Neto to second and third. That's it all. That's all he did. That, that's all he's done the entire series. Pathetic. Uh, a true waste of money. Not a good human being as well uh, as far as baseball. You know, he could have that life, you know, outside. And he could be a special person and, and you know, great family man. That's great. But we're not here to judge you for that. We're here to judge you for your baseball performance, how you treat the fans, how you treat the love of the game, how you play for those millions that you are privileged to have. And you are a piece of shit when it comes to that. So, again, Artie Moreno could be the best person, but we know he's not because of all the stuff that he's being investigated for. And, uh, you know, he... We could we could leave that stuff alone, but it's all that's in the news, so we can talk about that. But he, you know, he's a shit owner, and you have to say what it is. So those two go together, and he gets the Nacho Night Award. So back to what we were talking about. Let's get into those comments. Uh, let's start reading those comments and start talking about what you guys and gals have to think about on a Sunday. Everyone checking in with Happy Easter. Thank you, Abraham Fernando and uh, One Jets Pod. James Malou checks in with Balls Balls, and I believe he's referring to uh, someone being pretty cocky. I was pretty cocky. I want balls and balls and John Stamos. Exactly, John Stamos. <laughs> but he says Balls Balls and Reed Detmers. How many meetings will it take for this team to be decent this season? The chair wants to know. By the way, if you're looking for a good pod on food stuff and just general sports information, check out uh, The Chair with James Gonzalez over on YouTube as well. He's got some good stuff over there. Uh, also, Little Wayne says, you mean to tell me the starting pitching sets the tone for the game? Detmers and hopefully Silseth can become our one-two punch. Of course, we would have gotten Snell and Montgomery and be under the cap as well. Uh, that yeah, and we're gonna we're not gonna talk about guys who are not on the team. We're gonna talk about guys who are right now here. Uh, Jim says Reese's cups, chocolate bunnies were the key for today's win. So he had his sweet tooth on for today. I believe we take two out of three for one Jets pod. Uh oh, that is uh, what we call on here the halos in the infield. We call that. Uh, what is that called again? Our, our our inner halo honk comes out and we give a rally Chris special two out of three. That's what that's what our boy Randy's calling for. Yes. So we need, we need to get some W's and that would be nice to get two out of three. That would even our record right there. Laugh out loud at James. Maybe if I don't watch, they will win more often. James, uh, the chair says. Alex says anybody else see Cox in the outfield behind home plate? Aha. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys are still trying to be internet famous. It is pathetic. Uh, or, or what are they called? Light that baby up. I don't care anymore. I'm, I'm, I i do not care about calling out people. Um, Alex says Soriano is disgusting. He has great stuff. Jim Hoyt says, got to hear Heedy regulars like or hate new uniforms. Me absolutely hate. There is some differences to those jerseys and they don't look all that great and they can't be that comfortable. 
I'm I'm interested to see how Bueller's going to wear him because we all know that it, that dude he loves the tight pants, man, and that's not good to look at. You kind of want to put a block on that. And if he's if he was tightening those things before they did the jersey change, yeah, it's not going to be a good look. He's me popping out of that thing. Uh, let's see. Also, the chair says a terrible unis hate the color switch and the MLB logo. Yeah, that's the same thing too. The, everyone's really upset with the numbers. So there you go. Uh, Jim Hoyt says uh, give Perry Winkles even. <laughs> also for uh, for the fans, uh, they are paying forty dollars more for these jerseys. BS. Yeah, dude, the the jerseys are way overpriced. Like I had a I had a rant on that last night. Walmart has better uniforms. One jet pod says the new uniforms make DH gate jerseys look authentic at gym. Makes you wonder what uh, some of the actual Walmart Otani jerseys must look like. <laughs> we should see a lot of those. If you go to your local Walmarts, by the way, uh, this year's jerseys make the, me want to buy them from overseas, better quality. And yes, again, I talked about it. This one's an overseas Jersey and you can't tell the difference. It's got the, the, the Anaheim logo. you got the 125 year, uh, anniversary patch on the right side. I mean, I don't care. Again, if I'm saving over a hundred dollars, I'm doing that every time. I really don't care. Uh, let's see. Also, Heaty softball jerseys are better. <laughs> Thank you. So glad the season started today and the angels are one and oh, that's right, dude. I think someone told us that the, uh, season starts today, right? Cause, um, you can't really say it started yesterday. We got a lot of baseball left to be played, and the season starts tonight. Hey, guys, did you check out that home run? And we only got one hit after the second inning. That's all. We got one goddamn hit. Yep. How dare you? Exactly. How dare this offense? Uh, let's see. Also, let's get back to some of these comments here. Uh, let's see. Also, uh, Chris Rojas says Adele made good contact. Ward looked good. Ohapi behind the plate and Detmers went more than two innings. All uh, good in my books. Uh, Detmers has to uh, use a curveball more. The chair says. Uh, love of the game right there. Ren flop, Ren bum. True. However, if Artie Moreno wasn't the owner, Anthony Ren flop would never be on this team. Exactly. Hayes. And that is, that is the alternate universe. I want AC says, I want my leadoff hitter to go hitless to start the season. <laughs> well, there you go. AC congratulations. You got what you wanted. Jim says, got to be sure to keep track of the strikeouts this season for Stamos Nacho Awards. Who is the leader in the categories? Got to keep that updated. Yeah, you know what, Jim? We failed to do that last year, so we're going to try to keep a, keep an eye on that. Jay, uh, let's see, also Rally Chris Special. That's what One Jets Pod wants, which is two out of three. Two out of three, baby, and you got to be hungry while you do it. Jason says, uh, Ron Wash speech must have worked. It must have because whatever, at least for the first two innings hitting-wise, they, they were on it, dude. Those pitches – when and when he because he was throwing the same stuff if you looked at tyler's stuff the rest of the game he he did put it down a little lower but he had stuff up in the zone which was catching the corners but the angels weren't as aggressive and i think that the, that's what they needed to do the first couple innings if it's anywhere close in the zone i, I was really disappointed with mike trout's at bats he did work account account one uh to three and two and then he struck out on a pitch that was way inside um, he was really, I mean, he could have got rung up on another one that should have been rung up because it was painting the corner beautifully, but, um, he let one go that was right down in his wheelhouse, how he likes to hit those golf ball home runs. And there was one right down the middle where even my dad was like, he should have hit that. And I'm like, yeah, dude, he should have pounded it. And then he wound up check swing strike for a pitch that was eye level. And I was like, bro, stop swinging at the high stuff, bro. Go with what got you here. Uh, let's see. Is Halouettes half uh, of rocks in the outfield? No, Hayes. They are their own entity. I think they do some stuff with, I want to say, um, top fan rivalry. And they, uh, I think one of them Swilly, if I'm not mistaken. I could swear. Maybe Fernando knows. Uh, IE Native says, good game today and no complaints. Fuck Squid, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's hope that guy never makes that cockroach never makes the baseball a world of the angels again. Uh, see, I get all mine through Todd. Thank you. One jets pod overseas is made in China. Yes. Hayes. Absolutely. Hayes says, yeah, but pitching held it down, which is a good sign. That is Mark Carl checks in with W baby. We got that win. Sean says, in my opinion, Detmers and still are our best starters. And can we put Soriano in the starting rotation and put Sandoval or Anderson in the bullpen? Anderson is too expensive to be anywhere 
anywhere close to being a bullpen pitcher because he's not effective as far as he's not going to come out there and gas you. So if you're not going to have someone out of the bullpen that's going to gas you, he ain't worth it. And he's got a very mild fastball. Uh, I, I just don't see him like that's just a bad signing. And, and I think he's a number five. And you, and you all intents and purposes sign him as a number three. And so he gets thirteen million per year, I believe, or twelve million. He's on the second year of a thirty-six million dollar contract. So that was a bad pickup. Um, if he can give you anything, as far as keeping it under four fifty ERA, I'm good with that. I am good with that. I will take that. And and Silseth, I would like Canning to be, a, you know, have a breakout year. Um, Sandoval the same. I, I wish the best for this rotation, but we are wishing the best for a rotation for a reason. They're not very good. Uh, they're not consistent, and, and I, I take that back. They are good, but they're not consistent to be good to be very good. And I think if a guy, look, the only thing that I like that Perry said to save his ass and to save some sort of, you know, competence as a general manager because of your shit owner, he came out and literally said, "Look, uh, one of the, you know, we don't have a true number one, but one of these guys can become a number one." Because it's sort of like you got a job opening here and they got to apply for it. And they're applying for it by pitching like Detmers did today. And if Detmers can give you seven out of 10 starts like that, he's your ace, hands down. But if you're getting five out of 10 like that, if you're getting four out of 10 like that, you don't have an ace. So again, you're going to need consistency. At least give you seven out of 10 starts where he's leaving you in the game. You scratched a couple, a couple runs across the board. When Detmers hands the ball to Ron Washington, whether it be in the dugout or coming off the mound, that is here. I left you the lead. Let the boys finish it. If he's giving you that opportunity every time, there's your ace. There is your freaking ace. There's your guy who's going to stop the losing streaks. There's your guy who's going to reset the team. And good things can happen if you have an ace like that. If you have a pitcher that can stop the bleeding, the team can feed off of that. You can start momentum, and you could possibly go the other way. That's where you get your optimism from. That's where you get your good play from. And hopefully on the offensive side, a, de a developing leader can uh, you know come up to rally the troops to say, hey, you know what? We're only down two runs. Uh, so and so's pitching his ass off. Let's 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 put something together. Let's get a hit. Let's do a hit and run. I love the fact that Neto took off. I just think it was brilliant by Baltimore guessing the right time he was going to take off. So again, uh, keep that aggression going. Get guys on base. There's still a lot of room to improve. It's only three. It's only three games. We have 159 to go. So. <laughs> I'm not saying this team's going to win the majority of their games. We've already given all of our freaking uh, prognostications about how the season's going to go, but we want to be pleasantly surprised. And a good way to do that is to start playing good baseball and start focusing on, you know, the, the small things, all the small things. Uh, let's see. Ja Jasmine says uh, this game was an emotion was just emotional damage. It, if you're an Orioles fan, it was great. Uh, if it, it was emotional damage for them, how dare you? But it was it was not emotional damage for us because uh, we were able to point back at them and go, ha, ha. yeah, we got a win actually, you know, because we did not have the emotional damage. We had that the last few games. Uh, <laughs> let's see. I just saw a comment that's <laughs> sorry. Mark says, "Would Trevor Bauer be a helpful addition to the Angels?" Absolutely. But he would he would definitely have women protesting in the parking lot. Let's just say that at least for the first season until he wins a lot of games. One jet spot says, Hey Todd, any chance you could show us the problem for the franchise is? I put it in your video section. Uh oh, I'll have to look for that. Steve Lee says, Is it too much sex? <laughs> okay, okay. Let me explain that one real quick. That's my girl <laughs> quoting my dad because my dad's <laughs> My dad has one of the worst takes of all time. He said, when Mike Trout got married, he's having too much sex, and that's why he's not focused on baseball. I'm like, I'm like Dad, look, I love you. You don't own a lot of baseball, but that is a terrible take. I guarantee you he's having less sex now that he's married and has kids than he has before. 
<laughs> I mean, we like to we like to think he's innocent and you know he's stuck to his wife. Maybe he has, maybe you know, like there's no cheating because a lot of stars get a little strange, you know what I mean? But I'm just saying, dude, I guarantee you he's not getting the sex parts not affecting his game, whether he's getting a lot or he's getting or he's getting none. <laughs> <laughs> also, Ray Otani choked the game last night with the bases loaded. That was good to see, little Wayne. That was very good to see. Let me see what uh, he left in the video section here. Maybe it's something uh, that I can play right here. Uh, let's see. <laughs> well, oh, oh, he put this right here. Uh, you know what? I think you're referring to this, what the problem is. It's me. That is that is the problem right there. That's already Moreno. <laughs> I love that dude. That that is uh, that is one of the best videos right there popping up right there. <laughs> uh, let's see. Also, uh, let me get into some more of these comments real quick. Uh, except, oh, oh, Jason, that's right. He's in Texas. Cowboy Carlos says, "Is Shauna Will uh, on base streak still alive?" Yes, it is. We were talking about that earlier, Cowboy. Um, he's up to thirty or thirty-one. So I think he's at thirty. Um, he's got, uh, I believe the all-time record is either 48 or 49. Uh, Alvin Davis of the Seattle Mariners, uh, did that in the eighties. <clears throat> so the angels, uh, you know, could have a rookie pass him. He's fourth all time on the record behind two players who played at the turn of the century. I believe one was in the 1800s. So that's how long that goes back to. Um, so that streak is very, uh, is a long time ago. So you're looking at a guy, let, let's just say, unless there's a rookie from Baltimore, the rookie from, um, Milwaukee, a few other guys, if Sean Will can give you something like what I'm thinking he can with Darren Erstad, like kind of powered, uh, or power, I think he can give you a good, like 15 homers, 65, uh, 70 RBIs if he goes off. And then, you know, uh, if he could do that and bat around 300, 313, or have an on-base percentage of close to four, he's going to be your rookie of the year you know, from the American league. And that would be nice for us to have because we haven't had anything nice in a while. So um, <clears throat> that's what I'm looking forward to right there. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. He, boy, one jet spot says, I also put a 90 second phone call slide. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so if we want to do that, um, we can show you this, which is you only get 90 seconds per phone call due to Artie Moreno. So Artie Moreno, that, that's to keep the show moving right there. So see Artie Moreno's beautiful face and his wrinkly fingers. Um, those look like female hands to me, <laughs> at least the one on the right. <laughs> and uh, so if you want to make a phone call and you want to call in, I will put that up here right now as I get off of that. Hold on. Sorry. I'm still learning this uh, system. I'm trying to do it because I know he was trying to walk me through it. And I'm like, ah, let me let me see if I could at least try to do this on my own. So far, it's been popping up pretty good. So let me see. Look at the banners on here. And here is the number to call right there. It is 714-598-3221, 714-598-3221. If you want to get in your thoughts, hopes, and dreams for that Miami series. Um, real quick on that Miami series coming up, if I can, before any phone calls come in. Let's see. Uh, we got um, we got in the first game. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I have to go over here. It is... We are going to face Max Meyer. Max Meyer, uh, the left-hander, will throw. He's 25-year-old uh, from uh, blah, 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 blah. He is from Minnesota. Uh, he will pitch the first game on Monday on the first, the first day of April. And so his stats from last season, he only pitched two games, uh, six innings pitch total. Uh, so he came in there as a long reliever, but he is a starter true and true, and he will get his first start of the season and first start of his career. So we're facing a flat-out rookie uh, while Sil Seth will oppose him. Uh, and then Tyler Anderson will go up against, uh, I believe, Jesus Lazardo. Jesus Lazardo last year uh, is 26-year-old, another lefty we're going to face. Uh, last year, his numbers for Miami in 32 starts, he was 10-10 and in 178 innings pitched with an ERA of 3.58. So it's, that's – advantage Miami uh, unless Tyler Anderson shows us something different which I'm hoping for those are the first two games and then the uh the getaway game 
This will be Tyler San uh, Tyler Sandoval, Patrick Sandoval's time to you know at redemption. He gets his second start of the season. He's going to go up against Miami pitcher AJ Puck, who looks like a puck with those eyes. Uh, redheaded stepchild, uh, absolutely, and he's another lefty. So I thought the Angels were the only team that had too many lefties. Apparently Miami is going to be throwing nothing but lefties at us in that series down there in Miami. Last year he only pitched one game as a starter. He went two innings, allowed three hits, four runs, all earned, and has an ERA career in the majors, or at least last year, 42 but he did pitch uh, in 58 games as a reliever for Miami uh, in 2023, 56 total innings. He had a record of 7-5 and five with an ERA of 537. He has an ERA in Oakland in 2022 of 8.19, an ERA in Oakland in 2021 of 9.23, did not pitch COVID year, and uh, so he's got some pretty high ERAs. Actually, you know, I'm reading that wrong. He has ERA of 3.97 last year. I was looking at the wrong thing. I was like, damn, those are high ERAs. No, he had a 3.97 ERA in 2023, 3.12 uh, in 2022, uh, th uh, 2021. He had a six, did not pitch COVID. And then in 2019, his rookie year, 3.18. So um, there you have it. Uh, he's going to be pitching uh, in, well, he had the one game start and he got lit up that first game, uh, I guess, against Pittsburgh. So uh, he'll get a second start, but three lefties. Three lefties in a row to start against the um, Miami Marlins. So we'll see how the Angels do. Uh, let's see. Also says uh, dude that fucking uh, is hilarious right there. Also, I also put a 97. Oh, I saw that one. Demetrio says, let's go Angels. And so, again, if you guys want to call in, 714-598-3221 on a victory. If not, we will continue the show. Let me give you an uh, update on some of the scores for today as we got them right now. Uh, let's see. Full scoreboard. <clears throat> We got the Pirates, or no, we got the Tigers up three to two on the White Sox, trying to get the sweep there in the bottom of the ninth inning. Uh, the, the White Sox have their last chance before they get swept out of home. The Houston Astros have come back to tie the Yankees at three in the ninth inning as well. The Yankees trying to get a four game sweep on the Astros, but the Astros trying to avoid that. The Texas Rangers come back against the Chicago Cubs and are tied at five. The Rangers trying to sweep the Cubs in that series. Uh, in uh, Oakland, where there's no one there to watch the game, bottom of the third, the A's are up two to nothing, trying to avoid the sweep to Ohio. Uh, in Seattle, Seattle trying to win that series, but down currently one nothing in the bottom of the second to the Red Sox. Diamondbacks and Rockies, Diamondbacks up three to nothing, trying to win that series in the second inning right there. And then at the top of the second, the Padres all over the Giants, five to nothing. Uh, Dodgers and Cardinals play tonight. Finals from today. Obviously, the Angels win four to one. Atlanta uh, uh, does not get the sweep as the Phillies come back and beat them five to four. Then you had the Brewers sweeping the Mets four to one. Uh, that must have made all the Mets fans happy, especially with the brawls that were going on in the first two games, or at least the bench clearing stuff. The Pirates do win in 10 innings and believe it or not, break up the Buccos. They are 4 0. The Marlins are 0 4 as the Pirates win in 10 innings, 9 to 7. The Blue Jays uh, split a series with the Tampa Bay Rays, winning 9-2. The Nationals uh, do not win the series against the Reds. The Reds come back and win 6-5. And then the Royals all over the Twins, avoiding the sweep themselves at home, 11-0. They beat the Twins. So there are your finals for today. Uh, Matty Matt checks in with, looks like Ron Washington's uh, talk really did work today. And that's what we were talking about earlier, uh, a big, you know, whatever it was, whether it was said calmly, whether it was said, uh, you know, angrily, whatever, uh, the message was received loud and clear and the angels uh, listened and got the victory. So there you go. Uh, Mario Lobato says uh, too early to get tickets for the World Series parade. LOL. No, I think we can do it. I think the angels can do it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm gonna bring a sign uh, either Saturday or Sunday, looking for playoff tickets, or you know, because I'm still thinking about clowning around. It's the Halo Honk line. Yeah, Angels win. Like that baby up. <laughs> Rally, Chris. What's going on, my man? Good. So, how did you like the game today? Who was? What was your favorite part? No, we didn't get swept. <laughs> And, we, and, 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 and and yeah, we only allowed one run. That was it. Yeah, one, one run was uh, the key today because, again, the offense didn't do jack shit. 
after the second. Yeah. So what what do you think we do in Miami? Because your boy on one Jets pod, Randy, is predicting two out of three. Yeah, I'm going with Randy. Um, I'm thinking we're going to win tomorrow. I think we're going to lose that uh that to the game. Cause the one for you to check is, uh, out what I want. Uh, I want balls and balls and John Stamos. He lost against that dude that's pitching against Miami. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you think you're going to light him up? Yeah, I think we're going to get him up on oh. Tuesday. Well, I'm worried about that Sandoval start, and and also, you know, if Sandoval can, if we could get two out of three, but like you said, that Lazardo versus Myers matchup, I'm not too happy about that one. Wait, what? what happened? Wait, are you saying about Myers and who? And Lazardo. <laughs> oh. so what, what I'm worried about is um the yeah the one you said Lazardo. Um, yeah, that, that one that one's gonna be rough if they can't get the W right there. Because again, they're gonna have to get off to a good start in that game. Uh they can't afford any kind of mess ups. So Sandoval's gotta get him past the second inning for sure. I think he's gonna bounce back after um the opening day and everything. I hope so. Definitely hope so. But all right, my man. Uh we'll talk again and hopefully the Angels get that W, right? Correct. I'm thinking we're gonna um come back home with the uh 500 record three three. Okay, sounds good. I mean, I'll take that because I think we can take two out of three from Boston for sure. Yeah, or I'm not saying anything, but yeah, what about uh um, um bring out the um something called the the brooms? Oh, there you go. We'll we'll talk about that after the Miami series. All right, Riley, Chris. All right, Later. go Angels. Go Angels. It's the Halo Honk line. Hey, what's going on, Todd? A. Hey. What's going on? So first of all, I just want to clear the air here. I never predicted two out of three. I will never predict this team never fucking win shit. <laughs> <laughs> I will wash his speech work if we can win two out of three in Miami. That's a big if. Mm. <laughs> yeah, it sure is, bro. I mean, what what have they given us over the last nine and a half years for us to be completely like on board with any kind of like winning that they've had? Like like they haven't shown us anything to 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 really be like, oh yeah, we got this series. They've just been consistent and sucky. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, and when's the last time they won fucking eighty games, dude? Not <laughs> not since the three years at least since we started this whole fucking uh, network thing. Yeah, we've been hopelessly under five hundred. I, I would like to look at our record the last three years and be like, okay, this is what we've generated since we've been a <laughs> a thing. <laughs> so just just I won't I won't be on here too long. I just want to say we don't we don't have a pitching staff that's gonna I don't think is gonna over dominate people. But what we need because we got an offense right now that seems like hopefully they can put it together. But right now it just seems it's same old fucking Angels offense, man. But we need what what Reed Dentmeers and uh, yeah, who pitched last night? Oh, uh, Canning. Canning, that's right. At least those. I mean, that's what you're going to need with this ball club, man. You're going to need starting pitching that's going to go going to give you at least five innings plus. That way, you you don't overwork the bullpen because this bullpen, man, you, you, you it has to be precise. You, you, you gotta you gotta bring certain you know like Soriano in today. You gotta bring him in for an inning and a half, two innings, you know, so you can so you can narrow that gap, so you can bring in Estevez to close down. Because you don't want I I don't want to see Estevez having to fucking try to shut down games, you know, it, uh, with six outs. Like I just I want to see starting pitching get five, six. If you can give me seven, that'd be fucking great. But at least give me six if you can. Five at the very least. Five solid. I don't want four and fucking two thirds. I want five solid. Oh yeah, that, that sound bite can be used for other things. By the way, you wanting five solid? <laughs> <laughs> but, I'm sorry, but but no, I get you all the way, dude. Because again, if you have pitchers that are giving you five to six innings, that is amazing for your bullpen. That's less stress that that's put upon them, and that means you're getting somewhat consistent pitching. 
and you don't have to come in and bring in Suarez in the second inning. So I'm all for that. Absolutely. Man, it's, it's like I tell Dominic in our in our in our in our private chat. I even think I told you this too. You know, hey man, if, if the starting pitching is going to be off on a day, if you're going to suck, suck Anderson style, just eat up fucking innings and just okay, you know, just 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 work work your way to the fucking bullpen, man. You know what I mean? Just 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 don't overwork them. You know, just just don't fucking put gasoline on the fire like you say every fucking night, dude. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Jesus Christ. And just close that gap. Try to get as close as you can without fucking blowing your load. And and that's that's all I got to say, man. So I appreciate you taking my phone call. You got it. Appreciate it, Randy. Oh, that's, Bye, brother. That's Randy checking in right there from One Jets Pod. Again, Ooh. you want to check out his pod for football and uh, also other sports-related stuff. And he touches on the Angels a lot, too, there with Dominic, like he said. And Dominic from Catella Chronicles does Ducks hockey. I know Ducks hockey's been down, but this offseason might be exciting for them because a lot of those young rookies will finally start making it up to the big leagues here, hopefully, and as well as they, they're going to have another nice draft. <laughs> Drafting so damn high because they suck. But as far as the Angels, the season started today, as one Facebook user said. We got a lot of baseball left to be played, and the season starts tonight. Exactly, uh, Ty. The five uh, solid uh, solid soundbite would be asked by Randy. <laughs> that would be gold. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He kind of left himself open for that pause, but uh, but yeah, there you go. Uh, but <clears throat> you know. Big win tonight. Again, the schedule does not look so uh, appetizing for the Angels moving forward because the Angels play a lot of tough opponents in the month of April. And I know I touched on this uh, the other night. Um, it's it's really, you know, <laughs> let me let me let me pull them up real quick here. Um, the Angels have quite the schedule for April. Um, you know, it's like they didn't understand what kind of what kind of team we had. And they were just like, ah, screw them. Uh, but, but yeah, we have three in Miami, which again, Miami, although 0 and four, they can pitch and what's our problem. We can't hit. So that's going to be a tough series regardless. And then you got three at home against Boston, who again, that entire series is going to be tough. The pitching, the pitching matchups are Canning Crawford, Detmers, Whitlock, Silseth, and Hawk. Um, so Baltimore, you know, Boston's going to be kind of tough and then you got Tampa coming in and Tampa is going to be kind of a tough pitching matchup as well at home and then you so you play them and this is old school baseball i haven't seen this in quite some time at least you know for me as an angel fan i used to see this back in the day but you know you play home and home series or home and away series back to back so it's kind of weird you know i haven't seen this at least in modern baseball the last 10 years quite too often at least with the angels but they have boston and tampa on the first home stand of the season then they go out to boston and tampa so we're going to be very familiar with their hitters and pitchers in those, what is it, uh, uh, seven and six games of Boston. So 13 total games in a row are going to be against Boston and Tampa Bay. That's going to carry us into April 19th where we go to Cincinnati. So that is a long-ass road trip, which is going to be Boston, Tampa, then Cincinnati for 10 games. And we don't come home till April 22nd to face who we face today the Baltimore Orioles. So again, that's a tough team. And then who everyone thinks is going to win the central, the Minnesota twins are on that homestand as well. It's a nine game homestand after a 10 game road trip. And then after you play them, although Philadelphia went one and two, they're one of the favorites. And if you follow, uh, what is it called? Uh, some of the guys from FS one, uh, you know, Verlander's brother, he likes the Phillies to actually go to the world series this year. And those tough Phillies, including our favorite Brandon Marsh, a guy that we let go, is going to come home to face us uh, um, from April 29th to May 1st. So that's our that's our April. You know, a Philly, again, a team that could be playing for first place, is definitely going to be a second-place team in my opinion. Then you got Minnesota, who's going to win the Central, most likely. Baltimore, who's going to win the, the, the East, most likely, in, in my opinion. Uh, Cincinnati has a chance, at least as a wild card, maybe at the division. You got Tampa Bay, who's always a one or a two, and then Boston, who's always pesky. So <laughs> that's a very tough April. We don't get any kind of like eh teams until freaking uh, May, where you have Ohio for three at Ohio. Then you go to Pittsburgh, who, although they're undefeated, they're going to take some losses here, but they're all they're a pesky team. They're obviously, in my opinion, better offensively. Then you got Kansas City for four. You got St. Louis. Uh, St. Louis is kind of meh. Uh, Kansas City's on the rise. 
Uh, that team's a little bit, a little bit better than they have been over the last couple of years. They added some free agents, and then we see a, another former player right there in Texas, uh, world champions. Then we got Houston. Uh, so we we don't have the easiest of schedules, and we we and it's the weirdest thing ever. The weirdest thing ever, guys and gals. We don't play the Oakland A's. You know we're so used to playing them in the first game of the season, and we don't play the Oakland A's till June twenty fourth. We actually play the Dodgers and the Giants and the Diamondbacks before we play the Oakland A's. So that's kind of weird. And there's a stretch right here where if we're anywhere in contention, if we're anywhere, let, let me just tell you this. If we survive that gauntlet, the gauntlet of, check this out, New York Yankees, Seattle Mariners, San Diego Padres, Houston Astros, Arizona Diamondbacks, San Francisco Giants, Milwaukee Brewers, and two games of the Dodgers. If we survive that, anywhere from five to six games out of a wild card, and we have Oakland, Detroit, and Oakland for 10 straight games. That would be the time where I'm like, all right, we got to be buyers right here, or we got to do something. We got to, we got all hands on deck. We must win eight out of 10 versus this team. I will be Halo honkish big time in that stretch of games because maybe, just maybe, we could be relevant in July, but that's a long time away. There's so many games away. That's wishful thinking, but. I'm just marking this little thing here on my schedule that if we're anywhere in contention by Monday, June 24th, it is go time. We must win these critical games against Oakland and Detroit because uh, I swear to God, if this team can make it through April and May, you know, uh, we might have a chance, but uh, Artie will likely kill any kind of chances. Uh, Facebook user says, what do we expect from the road games? 500? Uh, I'll tell you my quick opinion on that. Yeah. I would like to finish three and three. Uh, that Tyler Anderson game, real. I mean, if he gets a win right there, Sandoval's got to knock it out. That's that's if Silseth gets the first win in that series. But if Anderson can win us that second game or keep us in the game to where we can win, let's pull that sweep, man. All the pressure is back on Sandoval. Get that W, make up for opening day, and let's let's come home. Uh, you know, over five hundred. But um. The home stand's gonna, you know, gonna be kind of telling too. It's not gonna be walking a park. It's it's gonna be kind of tough. Leaf says so. It appears that the t- the team meeting is making some progress. Well, so far so good. Leaf in one game we're one and zero, and I like that because again, how long did it did we scream and yell and kick and claw for this team to do anything as far as talking, uh, having a talking point, uh, saying no no media today. We're gonna have a closed door meeting. We waited for stuff like this, and we finally got it. So I'm happy that the Angels were able to finally get something uh, and, and pull pull something out their ass and, and actually be uh, a team that uh, you know you know is, acts like a team where a manager takes the, the bull by the horns and says, hey, you know what, guys, I'm, this is not acceptable. And if he's got the zero tolerance and he's seen back-to-back just shit performances like everybody else, I'm happy to see that because in Numbnuts Nevin's day and and Joe Madden's day, that was fine behavior. What what happened yesterday and the day before and the, on Thursday was fine behavior. It's just next game up, you know. Uh, Nevin would throw in the towel in the third inning and be like, "Who cares? Whatever." Um, so it that was really good to see. We haven't seen a team meeting since Mike Sosha, really. You know, Sosha wouldn't allow games to go five or six games. Uh, this team to go five or six games in the loss column before before starting a team meeting. So I really like that. Oscar checks in with, Hey Todd, long time. No see after five attempts, I have my permit and now seven more months until I take my license best uh, or test since I'm about to turn 17. Well, there you go, Oscar. Congratulations. Hopefully you get that license and hopefully we will see you on the road here. Not, uh, and don't do no, 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 those donuts, man. Don't be one of those guys, but uh, yeah, congratulations, my man. That is the first step to getting your license. One Jets pause says closed door meeting after being outscored 25 to seven uh, was a total Mike Sosha move. It sure was. Marty says, I heard Ron Washington came up in with the Mohawk to pump the boys up. <laughs> I love that pool, Martin. That's a good pool right there. That That is that is coming from someone who knows uh, good Angels baseball right there because Joe Madden. <laughs> you know how he had the eighties night and did all those funky things to get team chemistry in Tampa. He tried doing that here in the angels and it didn't work, you know, like wearing favorite sports jerseys and crap like that. 
uh, he was actually during that losing streak before he was fired a couple of years ago, came in with a freaking mohawk and uh, or was going to come into the, you know, into the uh, uh, what's it called? The clubhouse with a mohawk and try to get everyone else to do mohawks. And that was supposedly going to rally the troops. Uh, but Perry was like, no, 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 no. Mohawk or no Mohawk, uh, you're not our guy anymore. Uh, Mario says, if Ipe is taking the over-under on 10 wins for the Angels, I'll take the under. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you don't want to uh, take Ipe's example for betting. That's not a dude that I would follow. Let's just say that. By the way, real quick, um, want to pump up Believe Network. Um, we we always pump up 714 tickets again if you want to get tickets to the home opener or any games during this series and you don't like paying those extra fees, go to 714tickets.com or give them a call, now, especially if you go online, go to the apply now at checkout, uh, apply now code or coupon and just put H I T I for Halos in the infield get automatically 10% off of any ticket purchase. It could be for anything. If you like women's college basketball, men's college basketball, hockey, baseball, football, it does not matter. UFL, they sell it. It's in the, out of state. It doesn't matter. You can get those t- the the ten percent discount. It doesn't have to be baseball related, but we encourage you to do it for whatever. It helps us out. It helps them out. And then also Noble L, if you want to get discounted beers, go mention us over there. But Believe Network is where we're podcasting from. You want to go over there if you have other teams in the game. If you want to listen to specific teams podcasts, they have the best variety of fan-based podcasts just like ours over at Believe Network. We're over there, too, as the only Angel podcast. So out of all the Angel podcasts, yeah, you might hear, oh, Victor Rojas is doing Angels win, and oh, you have Cox in the outfield, and oh, you have uh, the, the Super Halo brothers and blah, 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 locked on. Okay, they have their own network. Well, so do we now. We, we're on the Believe Network, and that thing is growing. It's made by ESPN, former ESPN dudes, and also Sports Illustrated. So it's a really well-run uh, uh, organization, and they're a cumulus uh, uh, network, which also has ties to Sirius, which we have ties now to Sirius. So, again, just floating it out there. If you're looking uh, to get on a podcast network, if you want to hear our podcast, go to Believe Network and help us out there too by just liking and subscribing. There's no extra fees whatsoever. It's totally free to listen to. All it is is just making a little, uh, what is it called? Being a member of the page. That's all it is. You have, you know, having another password to your uh, thousands of passwords to your phone and everything else like that. And it's cool because you can get us on the go, listen to the audio version. And if you can't watch, the youtube version so there you go um <laughs> yeah hayes likes the cox in the outfield uh that would that would be an interesting logo if they went with that the logo but um they were obviously canceled and i don't care about talking about it now it's old news but uh they're, they're trying to rebound and they do their good job on on tiktok people still don't realize the whole scope of everything but it is what it is right it is, what it is. i'm sure they talk crap about us too so i don't really care it is what it is. We are all Angel fans, um, and we're all. I'm pretty sure they have the same uh, takes as far as uh, Artie. At least I hope they do. Uh, but other than that, uh, yeah, it's been a really good Sunday. Uh, spend time with your family. Stop watching me and uh, check me out when you have some time, though. But check out the other podcast, Catella Chronicles. Like again, talks all Ducks hockey, and then you got uh, One Jets Pod, which was uh, NFL. He's gonna be doing a draft special here soon, so check him out. Like and subscribe to his pace page go to the chair with james gonzalez who also does james james squared here on on uh, halos in the infield they do a, a daily show or weekly show we do shows throughout all through the week so give us a like and a subscribe tell other angel fans uh yeah we're just doing a lot of things we're blowing up we're going weekly so i'm liking it everything's flowing good we're being we're blowing up here a little bit like and subscribe follow us on the other stuff that's my shameless plugs um other than that big win today we look forward to the miami series i appreciate everyone calling in and also writing in the comments uh alex a few more comments before i get out of here hey says angels have more wins than the Astros. That's kind of telling, right? The Astros are 0 and 4. Alex is reminding us right there. So that's really cool right there. One James Pod loves the James Squared. <laughs> yeah, me, me and Randy actually sang that one, their intro. So if you uh if you get a chance, we haven't put it up lately, but uh, we got to play the James Squared song for them because that is that is a cool song. We took a, a page out of the um Wayne's World and we sang that one. Sunday W's are the best. Well, Sundays are also good for family, so go spend some with your family or your friends. Hang out. Do whatever you got to do. Drink a beer for me. Let's go, Angels. I will see you all Monday.
Good night, everybody.